Hey everyone, and welcome to another Kuno Reviews. Today we talk about the cult classic Earth Defense Force 4.1 for PC of the popular Earth Defense Force series. There are many iterations of this franchise, and sometimes the changes in a new game can be very minimal, with the reuse of the same engine, character models, and even levels and assets. Yet despite that, fans keep coming back for more madness, making this another comparable title to the Dynasty Warriors series, where each entry is very similar to the other. Yet there's a hardcore fanbase out there that loves this. First and foremost, what is Earth Defense Force? EDF for short is a third person action game where you need to defend the cities of Earth against invading giant insects. You can do this either solo or up to four players in co-op. For people who see the game for the first time, it's often the case that they don't have a clear picture of what the game is. I've heard multiple people think it looks like a tower defense game, and others that are struck by how ugly the game looks. And those people aren't necessarily wrong, I think the screenshots of the game are really misleading of how fun the game is, because the game looks really, really dated. It basically looks like a PlayStation 2 game, but better in terms of the amount of enemies on screen and the destruction in the environment. But the fun in the gameplay is just how crazy the action becomes, with more and more new enemies being introduced and you unlocking newer and even crazier weapons to wreak havoc with. There's a huge variety in gameplay styles, depending on what class of character you play as. There are four. If you are the regular soldier, you will have the most standard experience of a third-person shooter. You will have machine guns, sniper rifles and rocket launchers at your disposal. This is for those who want to feel more like a regular pawn in a bigger conflict, which is what I usually go for. But some of the other options are so fun to play around with that this particular class often gets overlooked. Nevertheless, I definitely still think you can have fun with this particular character, since the rocket launchers can put on one hell of a display on the screen, crumbling buildings and blasting bugs to bits. Then there's the Wing Diver, by far the most popular class, as you can freely fly around the map which gives a really cool feeling of openness and opportunity. They do have to pay a price, though, by having powerful yet very slow weapons that take energy as their ammo that is also used for their jetpack. Careful choices have to be made whether to waste more energy in order not to get stuck on a rooftop as a horde of bugs crawl their way up to eat you. The wing divers also have by far the lowest health pool, meaning that once caught they will die the quickest of the four classes. My personal favorite is the Air Raider class. These units get by far the worst regular weapons in the game, often sticky grenades that you need to shoot and then detonate manually afterwards. But they are the only class that can call down airstrikes and artillery barrages. It's really cool to pop a smoke grenade somewhere and see an entire district be laid to ash by a successful strike. It shows how epic and large scale the game can be despite looking pretty ugly. But of course, the main reason why you would play as an air raider is that they are the only class that can call for vehicles. In the beginning, the assortment of vehicles you can call upon and drive is limited to a few tanks, but even that is already fun. Especially in co-op with two or three other friends, it's cool to have them walk or fly around the battlefield as you give them support with the vehicle, meaning everyone has their own part to play in this gigantic battle. Soon after though, you will unlock newer vehicles and some are absolutely insane and awesome to see and drive. From a giant behemoth tank the size of a building, to helicopters or motorbikes, and even mechas with artillery sets on their shoulders, or a megazord that is bigger than a skyscraper. Yes, it gets really crazy and that also counts for the enemies, but we will get to that later. The final class is the Fencer. This class has the highest learning curve, as it is a slow moving mini Gundam but once under control it can be very powerful. It's slow, but you can use speed bursts to get across the map a bit quicker. I personally find this my least favorite class, but I know a few of my friends who love to play as this since they are the most tanky. So the campaign has you defend Earth from an ever increasing amount of bugs and other aliens, and the sheer amount of missions is staggering. I believe that there are over 90 missions in the regular campaign, giving you definitely your money's worth. Now it is true that not all missions are unique and some do indeed feel a bit like copy and paste, but the action is so crazy and fun that they do get away with this. It also helps that it often is set on an epic scale with you being accompanied by many friendly AI either on foot or in vehicles of their own, 
it really feels like that Independence Day or Battle for Los Angeles epic scale as hundreds of units are on screen at once. The levels are often very big and open, and vary from dense cities with tall skyscrapers to beaches for D-Day-like invasions or just the regular countryside. It even has some sections underground for intense close quarter combat. What's cool too is the constant buildup and new things that the game introduces. The first two or three levels have you battle against just giant ants, getting you familiar with the game's mechanics and controls and showcasing that literally every building is destructible. Then the game introduces the new enemy types in the form of web spiders and tarantulas shortly after, mixing up the enemy variety and their capabilities. All the while this is happening you unlock new and crazy weapons and vehicles to try out in the new levels. Then at a certain point alien ships appear in the sky, laying waste to entire towns in a matter of seconds and having you fight off their alien fighter craft only to find yourselves on the beaches clashing with their giant two-legged walkers shortly after. And even further down the line you will also face a Godzilla-like monster and more enemy types to just keep on amazing you and create new epic scenarios involving so many units on screen. It really is a blast for the senses, despite it looking like a PS2 title. Really impressive. It is a game that keeps on giving. And if one were to look at critique, besides the looks, it might be that what you do is essentially the same thing over and over and over again. Many shooters nowadays have you also perform certain objectives besides just shooting the enemy. That's not really the case here. The variety comes in the form of the frequently changed enemy types, but you are always just shooting at things. But the gunplay and action feels so nice that it does that at an amazing level. You can also always switch to another class to try out if you get bored with one. There's just so much to play, unlock and do, making this definitely a bang for your buck kind of game. Some other minor critiques would be that regular control with keyboard and mouse is appalling and you really need to use a controller in this case. The game is also, in my opinion, very well playable on your own. Sure, the game is 10 times more fun in co-op, but the game does a good job of conveying a conflict on a massive scale so it doesn't feel like a lone wolf or ego shooter experience. Things are always happening that keep you engaged. I can wholeheartedly recommend Earth Defense Force to anyone out there since there's so much in this game that there's guaranteed to be something for everyone to love. The absurd and maybe slightly anime-esque style might be a little off-putting to some, but for them, the regular soldier class is then a perfect fit. In the end, Earth Defense Force 4.1 gets an 8.7. If the graphics were a bit more current gen, it would have definitely reached above a 9, but the unimpressive visuals do need to be addressed in the score. I do think it was also done with a reason, since there are so many units on screen at once that it might be really laggy with more improved graphics. But since Mountain Blade Bannerlord can conjure up 2000 units on screen, I cannot see why more recent releases cannot do this either. If you have some time to spare and a few friends to play with, definitely use the chance to pick up this amazingly fun game.